Hello everyone and welcome to another mini sky tonight. So I had a viewer ask me if they could see some of the constellations that are available up in the e late evening sky roughly around about midnight since they enjoy spending some time with their family late in the evening on the weekends because they can sleep in. So I want to show you some of the late spring early summer constellations that you can see close to midnight. So let's look over here towards the west using Stellarium. And over here, we have these two bright stars. That's a part of the constellation Gemini, the twins. In fact, let's bring up the constellation lines again. Here they are. So again, this is close to midnight. And we have the bright stars, right? Uh, Castor and Pollux and the constellation Gemini, which are wintertime constellations. And over here, we have the backwards question mark of Leo the lion. With the bright star Regulus, I would like to refer to Regulus as the king star, which makes sense because it's, you got the king of the beast there, so you got the king star. Also for you Harry Potter fans, Regulus was Sirius Black's brother. So even JK Rowling took her inspiration from the stars. One of the things I wanted to show you folks is a unique object lying in this, in between these two bright stars. In fact, let's take off the constellation lines and you can possibly see it from here. In fact, you see that little fuzzy patch right there? That's a unique object that you can see with your unaided eye. If you take the bright stars Regulus and the bright stars Pollux and kind of do a meet me in the middle, like go in between the two stars, you'll run into this object right here. It is called the Beehive Cluster. In fact, let's zoom in on this cluster just to see kind of what it looks like. It's called the beehive cluster because it kind of looks like a bunch of bees going out of a hive. And it was often used by ancient mariners kind of as a weather indicator. If they could not see the beehive cluster on a clear moonless night, a storm might be on the way. And again, you kind of can see that little fuzzy patch right here since I got a clear moonless night on my program. So let's take a look at some of the springtime constellations over here. And the best way to start that is by going to the Big Dipper to find some of these constellations. So up here we got the Big Dipper, four stars that kind of form the bowl, and three stars that kind of form the handle. Notice how the Big Dipper's handle kind of makes a curve. If you follow the arc of the Big Tipper's handle, you run into this bright star right here. It's called Arcturus. It's kind of a big orange star in the constellation Bootes, the herdsman. Now, I apologize if I mispronounce this, my German is terrible and I'm doing the best I can because one of the O's in Bootes has umlauts on it. It's not booties, as many people often pronounce it. That o, o with the umlauts does have some significance in terms of its pronunciation. But it represents a herdsman or a shepherd. Now, I don't know about you folks, but I don't see a herdsman out of this. I, I like to refer to it as the kite. Because when I'm thinking of late spring, early summer, one of the fun things I enjoy doing is going out on a windy day and going flying a kite. So to me, this kind of looks like a kite with its tail and everything. Right next to the constellation Bootes is this U-shaped constellation that's often referred to as the necklace or the smile in the sky. But in actuality, it's a crown. It's called Corona Borealis. Now, before you start throwing tomatoes at my screen and trying to send nasty emails to me, it has nothing to do with the current virus that we have going on right now. They have similar names, but they are far different. This is called Corona Borealis, the Northern Crown. Yes, there is a virus with a similar name, but they have nothing in common. In fact, this constellation has existed long before this virus has ever existed. Nonetheless, if you take the curve of Corona Borealis and follow it up, you can run into this spindly guy right here. This is the constellation Hercules. So for you Disney fans, the Hercules that you see in the Disney movie is the same guy right here. Now, yes, he doesn't look like anything of the Disney movie. Just 
use your imaginations. But one unique object I'd like to point out lies underneath his, I guess, armpit. Um, nonetheless, let's zoom in on this unique little object. Bear with me. My clicking and pointing is not that great. Haha, <laughs> there we go. This is called the Great Star Cluster in Hercules, or M13 as it's sometimes called. It is a globular cluster that exists outside of our galaxy. And this little cluster of stars contains over a million different stars, some of the oldest stars in our galaxy. In fact, astronomers believe they are kind of like little micro galaxies that were formed outside of our own galaxy. In fact, the average distance between some of these stars is the same distance between the Earth and the Sun. So they're really close together. In fact, sometimes I, I've even heard uh, one astronomer call them the New York cities of the galaxy. All right, let's zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole sky again. Nonetheless, so let's head back to Bootes. Again, the best way to find it is you follow the arc of the Big Dipper's handle and you arc down to this star right here called Arcturus, or as I like to refer to it, Arc to Arcturus. Now, it's kind of orangish in color because, as I mentioned in a previous episode, color is an indicator of temperature. The more red in color you are, the cooler in temperature you are compared to the sun. The more blue in color you are, the hotter in temperature you are compared to the sun. I like to compare these uh, similar color references, like what the colors you see on a flame. So if you look on a candle, at the tip of the flame, it kind of looks like this deep orange color. It's a hot part of the flame, but it's not as hot as where it is on the base. So I like to think of it as the orange part is hot, but the blue part near the wick is really, really hot. Or also, I sometimes like to use the example of an electric stove. Not a gas stove, but an electric stove, the one with the coils on it. When you turn the coil to a kind of a low temperature, it kind of looks deep red. Whereas in if you turn it on to a high, it kind of looks like a bright orange or yellow. But let's look for another star using Arcturus here. So if we spike downward, we'll run into this bright star right here. It's called Spica. So the easiest way to find these two stars is you follow the arc of the Big Dipper's handle to Arcturus, or arc to Arcturus, and spike to Spica, as I like to remember it. As you can see, Spica is a beautiful bright blue star that's in the constellation Virgo, the Virgin. Now, to me, I don't see a Virgin. I like to refer to her as a goddess. In fact, let me show you some of the artwork of Virgo. As you can see, she is this beautiful woman who represents the Ceres, the goddess of harvest. In her right hand, she's holding a stem of grain. In her left hand, she's holding a little bit of barley. That's one of the cool features that you can do here with the program called Stellarian, is if you will look over here towards the left and you go to sky and viewing options, you can pick your star lore. So you can see different views of the sky depending upon what kind of culture you would like to see, whether it's Norse, Navajo, Siberian, you name it. Fortunately, the great thing about this program, since it's open source, several people have contributed to be able to display some of the constellations from different cultures. I personally use Western because that's what's more familiar to me. Right next to Bootes, you kind of kind of see this little blur of an object right here. And it kind of looks like this weird right angle type of constellation. This is the constellation known as Coma Berenices, or the Lock of Hair. The story goes that there was a beautiful woman named Coma Berenices who was a queen and her husband was going off to war. She was absolutely terrified that her husband not, would not return. So she went to the temple of Zeus and prayed for her husband's safe return. 
Zeus heard her prayers, but he asked for something of sacrifice from her, not wanting to have to sacrifice anything that belonged to her family and or her friends. She gave up the one thing that she coveted the most. It was her beautiful long locks of hair that many people coveted for all across the world. And so she cut it off to where she practically was bald and then placed it at the altar of Zeus. Zeus was floored by this offering that she was willing to sacrifice something that is considered sacred to most women. And he heard her prayer and answered it. Her husband returned safely with the spoils of war and she got to have her husband back. And as an honor to her, Zeus placed her hair up in the sky. Now that's the story, but to me, I like to see it as the weird right angle constellation and this little part right here is supposed to represent the lock of hair. So these are some of the things you can see in the evening sky tonight around about midnight and over here towards the west, or forgive me, it's over here towards the east, we have some of the summertime constellations that are starting to rise up. So hopefully later, Sometime in June or July, we'll start seeing some of the summertime constellations making their debut. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the description below, as well as if there's a topic you would like for me to cover over, I'd be more than happy to. Also, one of the ideas I've been tossing around is possibly doing a live star party over at the SCOBY Education Center. If you folks are interested in that, let me know down in the comments below and I can try to see if I can make arrangements to have a live star party using the telescope at the SCOBY Education Center. With that, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, never stop learning. Have an awesome night, folks.